Oh, hey there. It's me, Kayvon, by far the most famous and influential half-Persian comedian in the world. I come from a Muslim immigrant family, and if you're wondering about these black circles under my eyes, no, I'm not tired, I'm just Persian. Since I come from that kind of a background, I need to pick a non-racist candidate for this upcoming election, and we're gonna do that together. Obviously, the media tells us Donald Trump is the racist, so that's gonna be pretty easy. After all, he did call white supremacist fine people, remember? Show the clip. They were people protesting very quietly the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. People that were very fine people on both sides. And I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? Okay, so that whole fine people thing was a hoax. He denounced white supremacy. Well, that was just a fluke. Remember, in the most recent debate, Trump would not denounce or condemn white supremacy or the KKK. Show that one. Are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these sure. cities as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do that? All right, if he keeps condemning, we're gonna have to give him a coin like Mario. Eventually he'll get a free life. But that wasn't a very good condemnation. I like him hard and fast. It's not like he already condemned white supremacy to that same reporter four years earlier, is it? What are your views on the Ku Klux Klan and white supremacists? I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. You're telling me he condemned white supremacy to the same reporter? And why is Chris Wallace so focused on condemning white supremacy. This is like a fetish for this sicko. Go on, do it. Condemn it, Mr. President. Condemn it for me. One more time. Tell me I'm a bad boy. Tell me I'm a racist. Tell me you hate the KKK. I need you to do it. Ooh, tell me how much you hate the Grand Wizard. <laughs> oh, disgusting. I'm creeped out just watching that. Well, whatever. At least Biden would never say anything even close to racist, so that's the safe choice, right? I mean, you got the first sort of mainstream African-American yeah. who is articulate and bright and, and, and clean and nice-looking guy. I mean, it's, that's a storybook, man. What the f***? You know, we still have great comedy out there. There's always rambling Joe Biden. What the f***? Robin Williams is the man. We definitely need comedians to shed light when others won't. That's what makes America great. David Duke announced his Senate candidacy. Are you ready before you ask the question? Newt Gingrich said, Rebuked. Is that okay? Rebuked. Rebuked. Done. Done. Okay. He's run for president twice before, unsuccessfully. He's never before been the front runner. You got more okay. questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. It don't have nothing to do with Trump. Okay, so why am I being told Trump is the racist and Biden isn't? It appears the media is trying to divide good people on both sides. Well, after just a few of these clips, it got me thinking. I decided to dig up a handful of times Trump condemned white supremacy, and then several times Biden was racist to show what you never saw. Enjoy my montage. How do you feel about the recent endorsement from David Duke? I didn't even know he endorsed me. David Duke endorsed me? Okay. All right. I disavow. Okay? What you all know, but most people don't know, unlike the African American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community with incredibly different attitudes about different things. <laughs> Joe says shit that even people at Tourette's go, no. <laughs> no. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. I disavowed David Duke, and I disavowed him the day before at a major news conference, which is surprising because he was at the major news conference, CNN was at the major news conference, and they heard me very easily disavow David Duke. Unchain Wall Street. They're gonna put you all back in chains. Come here, Duke, sit down. What's really going on here is white supremacy is not a major force in anyone's life in 2020. But the media is pushing a hoax on us. Remember Jussie Smollett's, Bubba Wallace, remember the Covington Cross kids? It's a hoax and there's ghost hunting going on. You see, when no one's racist, 
and we don't know who. Who are we gonna ask? CNN! They'll tell you if you look at all the recent forms of terrorism, racism, and murder, looting, and rioting in the streets, it did not come from any white supremacist. They were nowhere to be found. And yet BLM and Antifa were everywhere. Right after that, I also disavowed David Duke. When we looked at it and looked at the question, I disavowed David Duke. So I disavowed David Duke all weekend long on Facebook, on Twitter, and well, obviously it's never enough. Uh, David Duke. Uh, David Duke is a bad person who I disavowed on numerous occasions. And because of a corrupt system that exists in Mexico, I voted for offense. I voted like, unlike most Democrats, and some of you won't like it. I voted for 700 mile sentence. And you will not like this. And punish American employers who knowingly violate the law when in fact they hire illegals. But they're the facts. People are driving across that border with tons, tons, hear me, tons of everything from byproducts from methamphetamine to cocaine to heroin. It's all coming up through corrupt Mexico. In the good old days, Law enforcement acted a lot quicker than this. I put out this tweet saying, as I stated at the press conference on Friday regarding David Duke, I disavow. I won't say fairly. I have a very strong view relating to uh, the matter to which you spoke last, and that is the hiring of undocumented workers. What did take place uh, was a violation of the United States immigration law. The committee and the public, as we've discussed, has to be assured that you are, without exception, uh, um, going to be willing to enforce the law. And the immigration law, when did you first hire the unauthorized workers? Maybe it's time we realize that millennials will call everything racist. If they can't win an argument, you're racist. That's what they learned at college. Their professor gave them an A-plus for it, made them valedictorian, and then handed them a bill for $300,000. Should you Class dismissed. They then go out into the world with that knowledge. If your dad grounds you, he's racist. If your brother takes your favorite ball away, he's Hitler. And worst of all, if your mother does not bring home the right flavor ice cream, she's a racist Hitler. When I put out that I reject KKK and David Duke, nobody picks it up. You know why they're not? Because they don't want to pick it up. Now, I have been asked this question so many times. I have rejected it so many times. White supremacists are saying, vote. do you want those votes? No, I don't want them, and I don't want him to say it. I don't like any group of hate. Fresh scrutiny comes from his earliest years in the Senate, when he strongly opposed mandatory school busing. It was designed to achieve integration and a more equitable education. What's less known is how he followed the lead of some of the Senate's most fervent segregationists. In a series of never-before-published letters reviewed by CNN, the strength of Biden's opposition to busing comes into sharper focus. On March 25, 1977, Biden wrote, My bill strikes at the heart of the injustice of court-ordered busing. It prohibits the federal courts from disrupting our educational system. Biden sought and received support from Mississippi Senator James Eastland, a leading symbol of Southern resistance to desegregation. He frequently spoke of blacks as, quote, an inferior race. And it's personal, and it, I was actually very, it was hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. Do you agree today that you were wrong to oppose busing in America then? No. To coddle the reputations of segregationists, of people who, if they had their way, I would literally not be standing here as a member of the United States Senate, is, I think, um, it's just, it's misinformed and it's wrong. Does he apologize for that? He's gonna have to make that decision. But, you know, let's be very clear that the, the, the senators that he is speaking of with such adoration are individuals who made and built their reputation on segregation. 
the Ku Klux Klan celebrated the election of one of them. So this is a very serious matter. Hate groups are not for me. But I've said this before. The press hates me to say it. They just don't want to pick it up. We are a country that stands united in condemning hate and evil in all of its very ugly forms. Joe is like her uncle who's got a new drug and hasn't got the dosage right. No, I haven't taken the test. Why the hell would I take a test? Come on, man. That's like saying you, before you got in this program, if you take a test where you're taking cocaine or not, what do you think, huh? Are, are you a junkie? What do you think? And evil. Not the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence, it has no place in America. So the question facing Biden is how he reconciles nearly a half century in public life with today's Democratic Party. Of course, Jake, one of his biggest pieces of experience is that experience and long record. That also is one of his biggest challenges. Even call centers, even call centers, which rushed overseas in the hundreds of thousands, how many times you get the call? I'd like to talk to you about your... Racism is evil. And those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. In Delaware, the largest growth in population is Indian Americans moving from India. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. It's a fully, I'm not joking. Oh, gigantic. This reminds me of those lawyer commercials. Have you or someone you've loved been called a racist? Call 1-800-I'm-No-Joe. 1-800-I'm-No-Joe Biden. The blinders have been taken off. They've all of a sudden seen a hell of a lot clearer. They're seeing, geez, the reason I was able to stay sequestered in my home is because some black woman was able to stack the grocery shelf. The problems that the Democratic Party's having right now with this Joe Biden guy, you guys gotta be able to call it out. You, you can't let this slide because everybody else sees it and Trump is going to eat him alive. He's going to eat that guy alive. The guy can barely remember what he's talking about while he's talking. Free from violence, hatred, and fear. We want our country to be a place where every child from every background can grow up free from fear, innocent of hatred. There must be no tolerance for anti-Semitism in America. We must never ignore the vile poison of anti-Semitism or those who spread its venomous creed. He's just, he's oh, a racist. racist. He's just Here's the deal. Someone's racist, and you don't know who. Who you gonna call? Joe Biden! Yeah, see, he doesn't know what he's talking about when he's talking. And this is not like, this, I'm looking at this like a medical condition. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. Now look at all these photos of Trump with various people of various nationalities trying to improve all their lives. Eh, if that's a racist, he's the worst white supremacist I've ever met. You failed, bro. Maybe you're like me and think all this is ridiculous. Maybe nobody is racist. Maybe that's the worst possible argument and you need to work harder in debate. But if you're a millennial who thinks everyone and everything is racist, I encourage you not to vote this election. That's right, basketball players and famous musicians will tell you your voice needs to be heard, but I disagree. You need to stay home. You need to rest. Because as you've seen here, there's no non-racist choice. You couldn't bear to get up out of bed, go to the polls, and vote for either of these candidates. So sleep, stay home on November 3rd, so you can wake up and do what you do best on November 4th for the next decade. Call everyone and everything you don't like. Racist! Thank you for watching. I hope you'll leave all your racist comments below telling people they're not black or Persian or they're never gonna be welcome here or there and tell us how you're gonna unfollow us and unfriend us because we don't agree with you. We're used to that. Also subscribe, add me on Instagram, Facebook, Telegram, Twitter, and don't forget, catch me on tour as soon as COVID allows everyone to tour again. No, you did not just say what I thought you said, Joe.
Oh, I know. You did not just take it there. Who in the hell do you think you are? Joe, who in the world do you think you are? Have you lost your ever lasting mind? You racist piece of... See, Joe, you about to make me come out of my character right now. You are about to make me show a sign that I have never showed anybody. I'm sick of you disrespecting the black community. You are racist. Okay, what the hell is going on here? 